As we start looking at making scrolls, we're going to find that a set of scroll forks or bending wrenches, or maybe you prefer to call them bending forks or scroll wrenches, doesn't really matter, but these can come in quite handy. These are really very simple in design anyways. It's simply two prongs that you can put over the scroll you're bending, and you can apply some leverage to control it. And they're often used in pairs with a bottom fork and a top top fork, or a handheld fork, I should say, because you do better work if they're both pointing the same direction, either both coming from the top or both the bottom. If you do one up, one down, you tend to put a twist in your work. But anyways, frequently they're used in pairs. These that I have that I use are actually made out of road grader blade, and they turn into more of a cutting and grinding operation than they do a forging operation, because this stuff is really hard to forge. Hard to grind too, but a lot of the fork is made by cutting and grinding, and then the handle is forged out. I didn't forge these out till I got a power hammer. I had these for several years with big chunky handles on them. Got a power hammer, then I forged them out, because greater blade is hard to work. So let's not use greater blade today. We might make some of these in the future, but I think we'll go for something a little bit simpler and way more traditional. I'm going to start with a piece of half by one and a quarter mild steel bar stock. Mild steel might bend if you abuse these, so don't put too long a handle on them. You don't want too much leverage. If you need more leverage, you need to make a bigger, heavier scrolling wrench. But mild steel should work fine for a light duty scroll fork. And the scroll I'm working on right now is one by, or eighth inch by one inch stock. When we get back to our grill project, we'll be using probably 5 8 or half inch for the scrolls. They're going to be fairly light duty scrolls. So you don't need a big heavy scrolling wrench to do those. So we're going to do this all out of one piece. We're going to do it forge hammer and anvil. It's not too hard. It's a fair amount of drawing out when you get to the handle end. But it's not impossible and there's no reason to shy away from it. If you've been with me this far and you've done some of these exercises, you probably know how to do the drawing out, so that's just what we're going to do. But if you have a power hammer, fair enough, go ahead and use it. For our scroll fork, we're going to draw out part of this bar to make the front tine and this top section. So we need enough to have this little bit in here, or larger bit depending on the fork you're making, plus the length of the fork, which is inch and a half on this one, about an inch and a quarter on this one, somewhere in that range is fine. Somewhere about three quarters, this is a, kind of a small fork, so about three quarters to an inch here. So if we go three quarters and an inch and a quarter, that means we need to have a total of two inches drawn out. We're going to take about half of this as we do that, so we're going to reduce this to about a five-eighths thickness as I draw it out. So if we need two inches, that means we need to draw out an inch of this into a two inch straight bar. And we're going to do that at the anvil with half face blows. And then we'll show you how we create the other fork. I said we want to use an inch of this material and draw it out to about two inches. And so to, to guarantee I get just the inch I want, I'm just going to take a ruler and a soapstone and I'm going to make a mark on my anvil, and that way I know how much material I want to offset when we come to the edge of the anvil. We'll offset our one inch and use half face blows at the edge of the anvil. I'm going to draw this out till it's at least two inches long. It can be a little bit longer and we can trim it, make adjustments. That's not really a big deal. Uh, it's going to get a little bit fatter. So this is now up to 
five eighths of an inch thick. And we'll probably draw that out too, but we're an inch and three quarter long at the moment. And ultimately, a little bit of a bevel on the end isn't going to hurt anything. I'm getting a little off on the diamond there, so I want to correct that as I go. Check my measurement again. So I'm actually about two and a half now, so I don't need to do anything more there. We'll probably end up trimming it. Now our other tine, this tine comes out and it'll bend. So our other tine is going to go here. What we're going to do is offset the far side and I'm going to leave about an inch here that I will then draw out into the other tine. And I'm hoping that's a little bit too much but I'd rather leave too much than too little. And we'll talk about exactly how we draw that out when we get to that point. So offset that about the inch and half face blows at the far side of the anvil. This section up here will become our handle. It's a fair amount of material, so work it hot. We'll do most of the drawing out of the handle over the horn. So this is the material that we're isolating to make the other fork out of. So that's pretty much the start. Now we need to draw this out, and this is the tough part. Mark Asprey has a video on making a wrench like this, and he has a backstop in the vise with a die with a nice radius on it, so he can get in there and work this without bending this back. I have not made those tools. So I'm going to do it another way. And I definitely recommend looking at Mark's video to see how he does it. I'm just going to bend this back so that that stub is out here. Now careful if you're using the cross pin that you don't bang your knuckle on that hot spot. But I can get in there pretty good. It's the hammer. It's more at risk than my knuckle is. And we're just going to draw that out. Trying to keep that out at the edge is kind of important. This is why Mark's system in the vise is probably superior, much less fiddly. But we are getting it there.
Now before I finish refining this, I think I want to straighten this back out and see what I got. So we just going to start this over at the horn. If you left your bends nice and gentle, you shouldn't have any trouble straightening this back out. So this is exactly what we're after here. We have about a one and a half inch long tine here. We have plenty of material here. We're going to end up having to trim some of that, I think. Now it's just a matter of cleaning all this up so that this looks good and drawing out the handle. So as we draw out the handle, how much do we want? This one is 12 and a half inches and it's about right, so we're going to kind of aim for that. I also like a handle that is fairly thick through here, but tapers in the one dimension and flares in the other. I think this is a very comfortable handle. It's stiff in the direction you need it and light in the direction you don't need to worry about stiffness. It's a place you can make really good use of the horn. Just work it back incrementally till you get what you want. I think this section is about all I need to do. I'm going to need to straighten it out up here every now and then. Because I want to flatten this out and it will mushroom over really badly and create a cold shut, I'm going to kind of round the corners up as we go so it can't do that. That's probably about enough material by the time this draws out. This will get a, a bit longer as I thin this out and spread it. I think we'll do okay. The reality is that a cold shut along here in the mild steel tool isn't going to be the end of the world. But it's better off if you keep it at bay anyways. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off because I think I've got enough material to get what I want. Then I'll be able to get a grip with a better fitting pair of tongs. That'll help a lot.
Now this pair of tongs will have a much better grip, make this a lot easier. I'm going to keep working over the horn because I want more stretch than I do spread at this stage of the game. Pretty soon I'll go up to the face of the anvil and start spreading and do both at the same time. One heat looks a lot like another until you get almost to where you're going with this. We're at 8 inches. I may have cut it a little too short, but that'll be okay. Now even though this might end up a hair short, it's not really going to hurt anything. There's still plenty of leverage in this fork. I'm also not done yet. If you're working with that spike up, be careful not to hit it. and make sure your hand is away from it. That would really hurt. We are now up to about nine and a half. I can still take a little material through here. I don't want to thin it too much here, so I'm not going to work there. But I can draw that center section out a little bit more. We're getting very close to what I want. Whatever length it ends up at this point is just the length it's going to be. At this point all I'm doing is cleaning it up. Try and take the rough edges that the working over the horn presents. And I want to chamfer this nicely because it's going to be a handheld tool. You want it to be comfortable. A little filing probably wouldn't hurt on this. In particular, a little filing of this end where the cut was will probably make it look better. 
Well, that doesn't look half bad. So that's all I'm going to do to the handle end. Except I think put my name on it. I think I'll put my touch mark in there. Usually do this with the treadle hammer, but there's no reason you have to have a treadle hammer to put a touch mark in. That's just my name and a bear paw, just like always. With any luck, we're done from about here back. I'm going to wire brush that nicely. Make sure everything's nice and straight, and you won't have to come back to it. Then we'll turn it around and we'll finish the fork end. What did that really end up to be? It didn't get much longer after our nine and a half inch measurement. It's ten and a quarter. So I'm about two inches short of my intended goal. Not too bad, and I think it's plenty long enough for a fork this size. At this stage, we're just cleaning up and defining the fork portion itself. The tines will need to be parallel in the long run, and you really want the front and the back pretty much to match. I've definitely left too much material for this front tine unless I make it really a wide fork and I really don't want to do that because I don't think it needs to be. So my back tine is an inch and a half. I want about an inch to inch and three or three quarters to an inch here. An inch and a half here would be nice. So that's about two and a quarter plus a little bit for the corner. Two and a half. And I'm at three. So I'm going to trim a half inch, a little bit more than a half inch because then I'm going to draw it out a little bit more. So I think that's better. bit of hot rasping and hot filing before you bend this can really make for a nicer fork and it will save you time filing at the bench later if later you wish you had done this. Want to make sure there's no burrs. That's what we're after. It's been that time. This is a place where controlled heat comes in handy. We know that we have an inch and a half tine here and we want an inch and a half there. So I'm going to cool off the bit that's going to be straight in my can of water. And then I'm going to see if I can bend this very controlled, pretty much right at that bend. That starts to look kind of funny there, but we're going to be able to fix that, I think. That's really taking shape. Let's get that hot again. Well, it's nice to have an exact size form. It's 
that's not absolutely necessary. I think that just did the trick very nicely there. And you can finish this up cold in the vise with a file. Which is where we're going to go very shortly. We need just the tiniest bit of cleanup and straightening which can be done at a pretty low heat. Just make sure you don't mess up the tines of the fork or the jaws of the wrench as the case may be. And then I'm going to let this cool and I'm going to address it with a file at the vise. This doesn't really need much. And it's sort of an optional step. I just want to make sure there's no little sharp spots that would interfere with my work and leave scars on the scrolls. But I also don't want any little cold shuts or sharp corners down here in this bottom where the tines attach that would cause those to, to form stress cracks and break off. Really, that's all there is to it. There is our scroll fork slash bending fork slash scroll wrench slash bending wrench. Whatever you want to call it. It really doesn't matter that much. And even though the handle's a hair shorter than I wanted, it's got plenty of oomph to do this eighth by one which is what it was made for and you can use that to scroll up a scroll. But in reality you rarely use these to form your entire scroll. This is just for tweaking and adjusting and sometimes helping it follow along a scroll form which is another video that we'll talk about. We'll also talk about making bottom forks either for the vise or for the anvil and that'll be a separate video. But for now we have a nice little scroll fork. The handle ended up a bit short but I'm not the least bit displeased with it. It's ten and a half inches. We ended up with about inch and three-eighths tines and exactly one inch in between. So this came out just what we were aiming for except the handle's a little short. And yes I took a bit of a cavalier attitude towards it. I didn't bother to try to calculate out the mass for exact results or anything like that because it wasn't that critical. If you're making a set of these and you made this one and say well I need one a little bigger or I need one a little smaller you need to then make the adjustments based on what you learned from the first one and this is just a good starting place to learn how to make more of these and you'll probably want a set of three, four, if you make a lot of scrolls you may want a dozen of these things in different sizes, different lengths long handles for a lot of leverage but remember if you put a lot of leverage here you're going to bend these here so you may have to start making these out of something like 4140 or you may have to go to the road grader blade which is tough stuff to work but I can't imagine you're ever going to bend one of these and they're not hardened or tempered it's just whatever I could do with it to get it to the shape I wanted and done so they've been heated they've been forged but they haven't been hardened and tempered and they are tough the mild steel one will last you your entire life if you take care of it and if you make them in proportions that are suitable for mild steel and don't put a two foot handle on a what is that half half by three eighths fork tine there so a handle a foot long is fine a handle 18 inches long is probably too much two feet long is definitely too much if you need that much leverage to bend heavier material either get it hot or put bigger tines or jaws on your fork or your wrench or whatever you want to call these things because they go by all those names. Now to store these a lot of people will make a loop that hangs and you can put it on a nail in the wall you can put a hang hole in but sometimes the tines kind of stick out funny because it doesn't hang this way then it hangs this way. I just put two nails in the wall 
and hang them flat and I stack them one on top of the other that way so I can see my entire collection and pick the one I want at just a glance. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Feel free to give it a thumbs up. Love it if you hit that subscribe button. Share the videos with your friends. Watch some of the other videos. Take time to watch Mark Asprey's presentation on a scroll wrench like this. To be perfectly honest, he is way better than I am and his video might show this better and show some other ways of doing it that probably result in a little bit finer, easier to accomplish in. But he does have some tooling that you have to make that is obviously welded up with an arc welder. So if you don't have an arc welder, you might not be able to make his tooling and this method will work if you don't have that tooling available. So in the meantime, head out to the shop and make something. Be safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.